Okay, Chris. Good evening and welcome to the January 23rd meeting of the City of Bella Vista Council. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do the roll call of council. Council Member Barr? Here. Lloyd? Here. Flynn? Here. Anderson? Here. Fowler? Here. Wozniak? Here. All present. Thank you. The first item of business is citizen input. Mary Shalasi? That's quick. <laughs> nervous. I know I have three minutes, so I'll try and get through this really quick. Um, we bought our home in 2012, and since that time, we've done four home improvement projects. We built a shed with electrical. We put in a wrought iron fence. We remodeled our basement, family room, and bathroom after a pipe burst. That was not fun. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we remodeled the main floor, <coughs> including a complete kitchen gut, took down a wall, and built a new mantle wall with a, fi a gas fireplace. For the fence, I pulled the permit from myself. For the other three projects, we used a local contractor, Dustin Popejoy of ProBuild. He is a licensed contractor and has several new home builds ongoing right now in Bella Vista. This last project with Dustin did not go so well. He's refused to come back to complete the project or address our issues with the work done. I went to the Community Development Office on January 5th to get a copy of our permit and his license and insurance information. To my surprise, I found out, number one, even though the city inspector, Troy Enix, was there in August and told Dustin he had to pull a permit, Dustin never pulled a permit. In fact, to my shock, I found out Dustin has never pulled a permit for any of the jobs he has done on our home. And number two, the city doesn't require any contractor, plumber, electrician, drywall, installer, painter, etc., working in the building or remodeling of homes in Bella Vista to have a city license to do so. I don't understand this. To be allowed to have a dog in Bella Vista, the city requires a dog license. To get my dog license, I have to prove he has had his shots, pay $20 and $1.09 in city tax to get that license. Why don't contractors and subcontractors have to have a license to do business here? To get a license, to, to get a license in the city, these businesses should be presenting business ownership information with current liability and or workman's compensation insurance to protect the homeowners who live here. If they violate city codes, like not getting a permit, or don't maintain their insurance, they are fined and or lose their right to work in the city. Simply said, it would bring a revenue stream to the city and accountability to these contractors and subcontractors. I'm coming to you very frustrated today. Our two permits would have cost $60 on an over $50,000 job. Inspections ensure the job is done safely and correctly. When we signed the contract with ProBuild, we had no idea he wouldn't pull a permit. After Troy was in our home, we never dreamed Dustin still didn't pull a permit. Troy never followed up and Dustin's work was never inspected. I wrote an email to Chris and I've already spoken to him today. Um, I didn't hear back from him, but we talked about it. <laughs> Uh, but he sent Troy out to our home on Monday, January 8th. Troy checked our kitchen wiring and told me it still does not meet code. Troy was unaware of the plans for a new gas line that was run for the fireplace. He told me we needed an electrical permit as well as a plumbing permit for the gas line. Troy kind of waffled on what he told me in person, so I sent him a series of emails to clarify exactly what we needed. I still haven't got that clarified. The last time I spoke to Troy, he told me the other city inspectors who inspect new builds couldn't believe Dustin Popejoy would leave our home in the state he did. But Troy saw it himself. I guess with a permit, Dustin is accountable for his work. I'd be happy to give any of you a walkthrough through our home. I'm asking for help from this council with clarifications on the permits required or that should have been pulled. I'm also asking the city council to look into requiring general contractors and any subcontractors to hold a city license with their accompanying insurance information kept on file with the city. As for us, we have not been able to get Dustin's insurance information to date, and I also talked to the contractors board 
um, they trust them and they don't have a copy of their insurance either. If the city had it on file, it would be in our hands now. This is really a win-win for the city and homeowners, a revenue stream for the city and protection for the homeowners who live here. With a license requirement and penalties in place for violations by contractors or subs working in Bella Vista, this would go a long way in preventing what happened to us. I appreciate your time. I'd like to give you a copy of the emails. Um, there's a picture, a couple pictures in here, and also the um, copy of his new bill. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate Thank you. That. I appreciate it. Okay, the next item is the approval of minutes for the December 18th, 2017 regular meeting. They were distributed in your packets. Are there any questions, errors, or omissions? May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Barr? Yes. Carey? Thank you. The next is the monthly financial report for November 2017. We don't have December yet because sales tax doesn't come in until the 25th of the month. So you'll see the final uh, year end next month. Are there any questions at all? I'd entertain a motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I don't need it. Okay, now we'll get to something where we have to move. <laughs> a motion to suspend the rules and read all proposed ordinances and resolution on the agenda by title only. So moved. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call votes. Council Member Barr? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> the next is a motion to suspend the rules and move all ordinances numbered A to E on the agenda to third and final reading. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call again. Councilmember Lloyd? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Barr? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Carried. Six, seven. Thank you. The next piece of business is something that we do every year, and that's to appoint a mayor pro tem so that in the event that I'm absent, the mayor can slip into the chair. Um, Councillor, can you just uh, give us the rundown again? Sure. Uh, at the organizational meeting every year, and that's your first meeting of the year, which is this one, uh, your ordinances provide as follows. The City Council shall at the time of organizing and public session elect one of its members as mayor pro tempore. Any alderman may nominate himself or any other member of the City Council for mayor pro tempore and no second of a nomination is required. Each alderman shall vote by naming his choice by voice vote if there is more than one nominee for a position. A majority vote of the City Council shall be required for election. Okay. So I open up the floor for nominations. Uh, I'd like to nominate John Flynn. Okay. Anybody else? All right, so I'll close the nominations. And I would like a motion, please, to appoint John Flynn as mayor pro, I was gonna say pro tem. Well, if, if um, or is he appointed? Uh, by if there's more than one nominee, then there's a vote. So at this point, he's appointed by, not, by acclamation. Acclamation, no reason Fair enough. Thank you, John. This will be year number four, I think. Appreciate it. Okay, the first ordinance is waiving the requirements of formal competitive bidding and authorizing the purchase of a used wheel loader and a used roads material conveyor slash stacker in a total amount not to exceed $138,000 for use by the street department. This is for our new sand and salt storage that we will be building this year on the east side. And uh, as I mentioned to council in an email um, late last week, we are now the proud owners of the land over on the east side. Uh, we have paid the $10,000 and we've closed. 
have all the um, other records gone to the county? Uh, do you know? Yes, sir. Everything is in order. The, 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 the land uh, arrangement is closed. Uh, the only thing still pending on that is our application for a property tax exemption, which will come from the assessor, but that doesn't stop us. Okay. So this amount of money is in the budget, and uh, Mike has been looking at used ones. He has found the equipment that he would like. And are there any questions at all? Yeah, I don't have any questions. All I'd like to say is, uh, you know, sometimes we vote on items like this, and there's not a lot of descriptions or photos. Maybe people, the residents don't really know what we're talking about. And I will not even try to describe this piece of equipment. <laughs> However, I just say from, from two different aspects. Um, first of all, it's a, it's a productivity thing. If you've seen these salt and sand storage buildings, they're all over the place now. And they're rather large, and they're particularly tall. Uh, so you want to try to get that material, you know, as high as you can. And right now, the method we're, that we're using, I think it's, you know, balls, backhoes or whatever it is we have available. So it, not only from a productivity standpoint, to be able to utilize as much as that storage building as we can, it's also a safety issue. Uh, you know, we want to be using the right equipment, and this is definitely, uh, this conveyor is something that we definitely need, you know, from those two aspects, productivity and safety. So, so if you've ever been to a farm, and they're loading the uh, bales into the loft, and they have the conveyor belt going up. It's the same principle. Um, I should add that by doing this and having this built later in the year, which we still have to go to bid for, we will now be in compliance with the unfunded federal mandate that states by the end of this year, you can no longer have sand and salt sitting on bare earth. Last year, we built the one out by the streets department on the, on the west side. And now we will have the east side covered. Um, failure to do it, by the way, was a $25,000 a day fine by the feds. So this is a good thing. Thank you, Doug. I'd entertain a motion to approve. This is third and final. So moved. Second. All right. Roll call. <clears throat> Council Member Loy. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Barr. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, the next ordinance, third and final reading, is waiving the requirement of formal competitive bidding and authorizing an amendment to the Trails Maintenance Agreement with the Bella Vista Village Property Owners Association, Inc., in a total amount of $35,000 per year. <coughs> Excuse me, for those of you in the audience who are not aware, on the trail system, the POA and ourselves split the maintenance 50-50. Um, it's been 20,000 up until this point, and we have some more trees being planted courtesy of the uh, Walton Family Foundation, which will occur in the spring. Um, and so we're getting ready for that. We also have learned from experience that if we have a lot of rain, trees begin to fall because the root ball gets very, very wet and it falls onto the trails. So um, that's two of the reasons that we're actually raising it to $35,000 each. The POA has already approved their half. Any comments at all? Okay, Wayne? We have a motion in the second. Oh, sorry, a motion to approve? So, so moved. Move. Second. Was. All right, Council Member Fowler. Yes. Barr. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Carry it 6 0. Thank you. The next ordinance and moving into third and final reading, waiving the requirements of formal competitive bidding and authorizing a cost sharing agreement with the United States Corps of Engineers, Little Rock District, USCOE LR, related to a flood study of Little Sugar Creek and its tributaries and for other purposes. Uh, just to remind you that we did have late last year one ordinance for the entire job uh, the Corps then came back and asked that it be split into two projects one for 17 and one for 18 17 we already approved and this is for 2018 Chris yes sir okay are there any questions at all already motion to approve please. so moved second <clears throat> Again, vote. Council Member Wozniak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barr? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. 
Lynn? Yes. Carried, 6 0. Thank you. The next ordinance, moving to third and final, is accepting and confirming easements dedicated to the public on parcel 18 09548 0010185 Howland Road and for other purposes. This has been approved by the Planning Commission. Um, Chris is here to answer any questions. Yes, ma'am. I do have a question. Chris, in the documentation, you said that the lot being split off was 0.33 of an acre and that it did meet minimum requirements. Aren't the minimum requirements larger than that? Uh, for property inside the city, you are correct, Alderman. However, I would suggest that this being laying outside of the city limits and in the planning area, it is not subject to our zoning regulations. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. Council Member Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Barr? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Carried 6 0. The final ordinance, and this is third and final, is approving an application for a private club alcohol permit submitted by the Bella Vista Village Property Owners Association, Inc. As council noted at the work session, this is a new legislative process that state brought in normally it's um it's a piece of paper that comes to city hall for signature and goes elsewhere for approval and um, this is now something completely different i think as you mentioned we do not have an ordinance no we don't have any uh, city mandated requirements in terms of hours of operation or um, any particular rules uh, so uh, there really has to be some ground to deny a permit if the city was a mind to do that. And since we don't have any grounds, uh, therefore there's really no, no, uh, nothing that I can think of that would be grounds for a denial other than something we do have on the books. And, and we talked about that at the work session, that would be a zoning issue potentially. And, uh, the city administration has gone through that and this is not any kind of a zoning violation. It, it fits within the zoning. So, um, they still have to meet all their state requirements, but uh, uh, the state legislature changed the law and made these uh, local governing bodies, including yourself, uh, grant approval first before they took it on. And uh, so this is what you have to do here today. Um, so they provided this application and uh, it's in your packet. Any questions at all? Yes, sir. I have one question. <coughs> I'm sorry I didn't ask it back on the first ordinance, but uh, this one, B and also A, how quickly do we want to do those? Do they need the emergency clause is my point. Mm. Well, A is already done. Um, A is... Um, A is buying those... Well, that, 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 that those, we need that doesn't mean, that, Okay. Ordinances waiving the requirements of formal competitive bidding are not of a general and permanent nature, and therefore they take effect immediately without an emergency clause. Okay. All right, so this one, uh, this is granting a permit, so there is going to be 60 days without granting the emergency clause uh, because there could be a potential referendum petition. So uh, there's, that's, that could happen. So there is no emergency clause that's been included with this. It would, be it would be difficult, I think, for the city to justify an emergency need to grant an alcohol permit. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. <clears throat> okay. Council Member Lloyd. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Anderson? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Barr? Yes. Carry 6 0. Moving into the world of resolutions, the first is approving the mayor's reappointments of Lila Smith and Arlen Engelken to the City of Bella Vista Public Library Advisory Board for five year terms beginning January the 1st, 2018. Are there any questions or comments? I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Council Member Wozniak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Fowler? Yes. 
Barr. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Carey, 6-0. Thank you, Councilor. I wanted to say one more thing. I, I may have misspoken, actually. On this uh, ordinance regarding the alcohol permit, that is also not of a general and permanent nature and would take effect immediately without an emergency clause. It's the first time we've done that, so I've thought about it, but I, I do believe it would take effect immediately okay. without an emergency clause. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the clarifications. The next resolution amending the 2018 city budget to transfer $26,200 from Police Department Restricted Funds Account Number 33,000 to the Police Department Supplies and Equipment Over 1,000 Account Number 52,800 for the purchase of computers. This is the Heroes and Hamburger money that was raised in the summer of 2016 that was put into re a restrictive fund until such time as the police were ready to order the computers. Uh, that time has come. Chief is with us uh, this evening if you have any questions. But I think it's pretty clear cut what the money is going to be used for. Any questions at all? Yes, sir. I don't really have a question. I'd just like to uh, salute the community. I think the support for both the fire and the police in this town consistently has been outstanding. And that to be able to purchase things like this because of our citizens' uh, generosity with the heroes and hamburgers is uh, pretty neat, really. Nicely said. I agree. Anyone else? No? Okay. Where do you go? Motion. A motion so to moved. approve? So moved. Second. Okay. All right. Councilmember Barr? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Carey? 6-0. Thank you. The next resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract extension with Black, Black Box Labs LLC in the total amount of 48000 for marketing and advertising and brand strategy services through the end of calendar year 2018. This is in the approved 2018 budget. There is no monthly increase from our contract with the same company in 2017. And Ms. Lapp is here this evening if you have any questions. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Lloyd. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Brock Barr. Yes. Thank you. Six zero. Thank you. The next resolution is appointing members to the Planning Commission and for other purposes. The two people are Don Robinson. Don is being reappointed. He's had many years of service on the commission. And we welcome a newcomer, Steve Burke, who was here at the, um, at the work session. Are there any questions at all? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Council Member Barr. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Carey, 6 -0. Thank you. The final resolution of the evening is adopting amendments to the City of Bella Vista Employee Handbook, as noted at the work session by our HR Director, Melissa uh, Cruz. This is getting our, our um, handbook up to snuff for the introduction of medical marijuana. Um, I will tell you that this afternoon, we held a, a two-hour mandatory session for all managers, including yours truly, to attend an alcohol and drug overview by a professional this afternoon so that we're aware of how to deal with this situation, how to spot it. Um, I must confess that when I always hear about the opioids and the problem that we have across the nation, it's always a little scary. So it was good that we had everybody at this session this afternoon. Are there any questions at all? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. So, so moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Barr. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Carey, 6-0. Thank you. Meetings and announcements. The next council, or sorry, the city council work session will be Tuesday, February 20th at 5.30 p.m. in the Bella Vista Court Building. That's our work session. And the next regular meeting of the city council will be Monday, February 26th at 
30 p.m. here in the court building. The Planning Commission work session will be Thursday, February the 1st at 4.30 in the City Hall Conference Room. And the Planning Commission regular meeting will be February, uh, February the 12th at 6.30 p.m. here in the court building. And finally, the Board of Zoning Adjustment will meet February 22nd at 5.30 in the evening here in the court building. That's the end of the agenda. We're adjourned. Thank you for attending. Safe home and stay warm. <laughs>